What's your view into how serious this particular variant is? Well, let me first start by saying all the credit goes to South African scientists and scientists across Europe for not only detecting this, but using social media in a good way to spread all the information that they have about this. We criticize social media a lot about misinformation. This is an example of how good it can be when it comes to uh, spreading the right information. Uh, we know that just before Thanksgiving, it became obvious that there was, in South Africa, a new variant that had an abnormally high number of mutations across its gene, but in particular in the spike protein, which is the target for the vaccines that are being distributed globally now. Um, what happened recently is that the South African public health officials realized that one of their PCR tests could actually serve as a surrogate for this variant. And if you use that data, it seems like this 529 variant is increasing at an incredibly fast pace across areas of South Africa and multiple provinces of South Africa. So that was the, the, the real significant piece that caused this to get on everybody's radar screen. Do we have a sense of how much it evades the natural immunity conferred uh, by prior infection or by uh, some vaccine? Just theoretically, from looking at the sequence, and you could probably see it right behind me on my desktop here, um, it has a number of mutations which have been predicted to evade antibody responses. Now, it has a few that are conserved, so this won't be a case of something that's completely able to evade the vaccine-induced immunity, but it has more than other variants that we've seen so far, which, again, on paper, is what uh, is concerning to us. Andy, good morning to you. We're just getting some lines coming through from uh, from Biontech, who, of course, have been working with Pfizer on that vaccine, much used around the world. They're just giving us some time scales around what they're going to do next, and I think this is interesting. They expect data from lab tests on the new variants in two weeks that, depending on that lab data, may require vaccine adjustment. That gives us a sense that we'll, it, we will know then in the next couple of weeks or in two weeks' time just how well in a lab environment the Pfizer vaccine will stand up to this. Then the real world will be another thing. Absolutely, and that sounds like about the right timeline. As I just mentioned, the sequence is on my desk right now. Emails have gone out to try to get my laboratory group together to try to prepare to do some of these tests. I'm actually here in the office today doing some of these antibody tests against other variants that we have in the laboratory. So that sounds like the right time frame. I think in terms of the general public, what this is, serves as an example of is now is the time to actually go out and do something proactive. If you haven't gotten your booster, go get your booster. If you haven't gotten your vaccine, go get your vaccine because by the time this variant becomes a, a, a global threat if it does um, now is the time to act to try to do something to help curve the impact of this variant so it just serves as a reminder we have tools we have to use them effic efficiently and mm. if you haven't been vaccinated now's the time to get it if you haven't gotten your booster now's the time to get it to really give you the best tools to fight off this variant uh, and Andy, what do you take away as a sort of big learning from the way that this this uh, variant has uh, emerged and may be out there in various parts of the world? We know it's in Southern Africa, of course. We know it's in Hong Kong and we know it's in Israel and, you know, it could be elsewhere as well. We, we don't know yet. The UK has said it's not here in the UK, but we'll wait to hear from lots of places. What do you take away? Is this all about making sure that we get better distribution of vaccines globally? Because that sounds an appealing argument to make and you can definitely see the humanitarian reasons behind that. But in South Africa, Africa. Our reporting suggests that they, they don't have full vaccination, but it's not to do with a lack of vaccine. It's a lack of the right information getting to the right people to persuade them to go get the vaccine. Absolutely. You hit on some important points there. I think first it starts with testing. Good testing coupled with sequencing allows for the detection of these variants early, and that helps us prepare for these variants. And then two, it informs the current public health interventions. As I mentioned, getting yourself vaccinated is the first thing that you can do right now. It may be that we need to reformulate a vaccine. If this virus does become dominant in the world, that can be done. We have antivirals on our way that can be utilized effectively, but we have to think about these things as layered approaches to protect us from COVID-19 None of them are 100% effective, but combined approaches allow us to minimize the severity of this disease. And again, this variant is going to be another test, if it does emerge globally, of how well we can do the things that we've already learned can uh, turn the tide on COVID-19 cases.